In a moment, we'll meet Tom Ruskin, president of CMP Protective and Investigative Group. His company is investigating the crash for Daniel Shula. First, the statement from Joseph Longo, the brother of Daniel Longo, who died in the crash. Up until this time, my family and I have not given any statement to the press or media. We just want to grieve in private. The loss of my brother, Dan Longo, has left a wound that will probably never heal. I want Daniel Schuler to know that he keeps inflicting more pain on all concerned by once again going to the media to try and paint a picture of a perfect wife and mother. Diane Schuler is the one that killed my brother Dan, his friends Guy and Michael, her own nieces, her own child. The perfect wife and mother who was drunk and high on pot. Daniel Schuler, my family and I pray for your little boy to recover fully from his injuries. Our, hurt, our hearts hurt for him. For the record, we also asked the Hans and the Bastardi family for statements they declined to provide them. All right, Tom Ruskin, you're the uh, investigator on behalf of Daniel. What have you found? What we found is everything contrary to the fact that she was drinking that day. We found that she left the campground at around 9.30. Daniel left right in front of her. At that point in time, they proceeded, uh, Diane and the kids proceeded to the McDonald's. The police have said that in analyzing the video from McDonald's that day, that they see nothing unusual in, in her behavior. We know she was at McDonald's till 1040 that morning. We found, my firm and my investigators found, in a convenience store, uh, right in close proximity to the McDonald's, we found that Diane pulls in with the minivan owned by her brother and enters that convenience store after filling up her car or the minivan with gas. She proceeds and she looks around the store looking for something. She then comes back and you see her very clearly on the video engaging the store clerk in a conversation. The store clerk has given us a statement which says that he independently remembers Diane Schuler. He didn't know it was the woman involved in the Taconic Parkway accident. He remembers her. And he picked her out of the video as we were going through the video of that day. He said that's the woman who came in and was looking for Tylenol or Advil gel caps. He didn't have it. She departs and you see her very clearly walking in and walking out of that store. What appears to be a totally normal walk and gaunt and getting back into the car and leaving. We then know that she proceeded down uh, Route 17 eastbound. All right, Tom. Yeah. That's, that's very indicative, and you're a veteran investigator. Yes. So is your conclusion that the medical examiner is totally wrong, the New York Police, di the police Division, state police are totally wrong, mm -hmm. everybody is wrong but you? I'm not, I'm not saying that she didn't have alcohol in her system. I haven't been able to determine that one way or the other. Daniel Schuler and the Schuler family felt so convinced in, in Diane's reputation and her background, which is substantiated so far by our investigation, that they went out and they paid out of their good money for a private investigation firm to come in and look at this and take it where it leads it. So if we had found that Diane Schuler had left the five kids in the car and gone to a bar that day, we would be telling the Schuler family that's what we found. We haven't found that, Larry. And in all, all right. my years, and I, I will tell you that I spent eight years in the narcotics division, the New York City Police Department, making hundreds of arrests in my career. And I will tell you that I have never heard someone be able to tell me that when someone smoked pot and what their THC levels are and, and, and make that indicative that they smoked pot 15 to 30 minutes beforehand. I've never heard that in all my years, 31 years of investigating, I've never heard of that. Okay, we'll be right back with more, don't go away. Uh, Jay Shuler, I wanna ask you, do you support Daniel's quest to not go away and continue this fight. Absolutely, Larry. This isn't Diane. This isn't the Diane we know. Um, that to answer to all the families that are, that are wondering why we're doing this, we're doing this because I, if that was their loved one, they would want this done too. This did not. This isn't Diane. She's a wonderful mother, wonderful friend, and Diane would want us to do this to fight for her to say that the, you know she can't rest in peace. We can't have her rest in peace until we can clear her and make this, you know, try, make it happen. That's why we hired Tom. We have Dominic. This is what we want. 
because we yeah. we can't we don't feel she can rest. Daniel, um, what about this uh, toothache question? She's had a toothache for a while, a, a good two months, but Dominic knows a lot more well, about it. Well, to mention it as a toothache is uh, she had an abscess in the right upper side of her mouth. It was two months old. That day she was looking for, and we can prove, some sort of medication. Right. I am not it's... suggesting at all that the ambisol or anything else is what turned into alcohol. That's the silliest comment anyone could think. But I will tell you how bad that abscess was, and that's what we want to look at, that that might have caused the TIA that we believe she had. Something oh. happened to this woman. Something created something that caused her to get back in that car. Caused uh, Tom her Ruskin, Tom Ruskin, a veteran investigator, former police officer. What's your theory? I don't know what my theory is as of yet. We have investigators out every single day taking down the route and going up and down that highway looking for any type of leads. What we do know is this. At 12.08, she had a phone conversation with her brother's family. And during that conversation, not only was Diane coherent, responsive, she was engaged. They were talking about future plans between the families. Diane was the only person on that two-minute conversation. From 12.10, when that phone call ended, to 12.58, something happened. Something changed, because at 12.58, when Emma, her nine-year-old niece, engages her family in a conversation, she says that there's something wrong with Aunt Diane, that Diane is confused, Diane is slurring, they hear it in the background. Now, something happened that 48-minute period. You have it no sorted, theory? It sort of defies logic that someone could consume 10 ounces, All 10 right. shots of alcohol. Let's That's ask, one shot every right, five let's minutes. Ask, Daniel, what is your theory? I what do you think happened to your wife? I believe she had a stroke, something to do with the teeth. With the teeth. Larry, you have to remember now that what uh, our investigator has not told you yet, that we went to 30 bars, 30 liquor stores. Not one person has ever come forward and said they ever saw Diane drink, not drunk, drink. Larry, to the contrary, we have interviewed dozens and dozens and dozens of people who knew Diane, who worked with her, who were her bosses, who just knew her casually from stores and, and other things in the area in which they live. Not one person, not one, has ever seen her drunk, including her own family. That okay. has to All raise, right, uh, that has to raise you. your mind. I got, obviously. All right, Daniel and Dominic will remain. When we come back, we're going to be joined by Dr. Drew Pinsky, the psychologist, the host of VH1 Celebrity Rehab and author of The Mirror Effect, and our own Dr. Sanjay Gupta, who is CNN's chief medical correspondent. Not only that, in addition to being a brain surgeon, he's also a certified medical examiner. That's all next.